Our protagonist in this film is a 23-year-old man named Cherry, who lives in the heart of Ohio. He takes us on a soul-searching journey. He opens up about the twists and turns that have brought him to this critical juncture. In the first scene of the film, he approaches a black car and speaks to the driver about meeting him elsewhere, before proceeding to pull off a gripping bank robbery. He explains to the viewers his method of doing so before going to the teller named Vanessa and politely demanding her to give up the money. Cherry gazes into Vanessa's eyes and says he feels a kind of sadness, like he knew things were going to end right there. Cherry starts remembering his past, taking us back where it all began. It's 2002 when Cherry becomes infatuated with his college English classmate called Emily, but he is already in a relationship with a woman named Madison. However, Madison sees Cherry as weak, and she openly flirts and goes off with other men when Cherry visits her at college. Cherry decides to leave Madison alone, as he sees that they have nothing in common and have no future together. In between school, Cherry tries to find work, but only lasts two weeks at a pizzeria when the manager sees him as useless. He spends most of his time with his best friend James Lightfoot, along with a guy named Roy and his cousin Joe. James chastises Joe for planning to go off to join the Marines on their way to the bank to get Cherry's money back. However, they fail to do that and James's car breaks down and they are forced to walk back. Cherry meets up with some other guys, he gives them some of his Xanax and he gets ecstasy in return from these guys. They tell him about a party that's happening in the neighborhood. He joins his friends and they all head out to the party where he runs into Emily again. He tells her he likes her and they go for a walk before later hooking up. When she offers him sex and tells him to do whatever he wants with her, Cherry starts crying over his own personal nerves and emotions, but she tells him not to feel ashamed about it. He later learns about how Emily caught her father cheating on her mother and got a black eye after telling her mom about it. The two starts dating and Cherry forgets about Madison. Their relationship blossoms. For him, it was the beginning of a life he had been waiting for a long time. But what's a love story without tragedy? When Cherry confesses his love to Emily after they had been dating for a long time, Emily gets a bit nervous about it. She gets afraid of emotional attachment and commitment, and that is when she tells Cherry that she is leaving the country to study in Montreal, meaning they would have to break up. A heartbroken Cherry unable to face the dilemma and rolls himself in the army as a medic to run away from his pain. Just before he is about to leave for basic training, Emily tells Cherry she wants to say goodbye before she leaves for Montreal, so he invites her to a party where he will be serving drinks, but he gets upset when Emily brings another student named Benji. They both have an argument about it, and then Cherry asks Emily to leave. Cherry spends the rest of the party there and is given a ride home by a drunk guy named Tommy. When he gets home, he finds Emily in his house crying. After comforting her, they spend time together, and Emily reveals she's not going to Montreal. She admits that she lied about it because she wanted to get away from him since she found herself falling in love with him. Cherry tells her that he has joined the army because he was sad after the breakup, and he will be shipped off soon, making it harder on both of them. Though there is no turning back for Cherry, he has to join the army camp soon. Before leaving, the couple decide to get married in court and hopes to meet again once Cherry is back. In 2003, Cherry joins the army and goes through the harsh training from the drill sergeants. He befriends another private, Jimenez, who joined to support his pregnant wife and their unborn child. While training to be a medic, Cherry learns he is colorblind. The men are trained to kill insurgents, and some of them attempt suicide so that they don't have to graduate the training. Cherry and Jimenez complete their medic training before heading out into the field. In the meantime, Cherry does his best to maintain contact with Emily. The troops are sent out onto the battlefield to fight. Cherry sees several men horribly killed and maimed, which adds to his stress and anxiety. During his stay in the army camp and placement in Iran war as a medic, Cherry suffers from PTSD. He has faced repeated traumas of losing friends and colleagues, including seeing his friend, Jimenez, getting burnt and killed from an IAD. A war that looked thrilling from the outside quickly turns into a nightmare. Cherry just couldn't wait for the servitude to end soon so he can go back home. In 2005, the soldiers return home and Cherry reunites with Emily. They move into their new home and Cherry gets a construction job with Joe, who is also returned from the army overseas. The two suffer from PTSD and panic attacks. 
Joe even attempts suicide at one point by jumping out of the car his girlfriend is driving, with Cherry and Emily in the back seat. Coming back home, Cherry was shaken up, mentally and emotionally, by his trauma. He couldn't sleep, and when he did, he dreamt of violence. All of that takes a toll on him physically. He reunites with James after he broke into Cherry's old house, thinking he still lived there, and Cherry had to bail him out. Cherry tries to get veteran aid to treat his PTSD but has trouble with it. His behavior affects Emily as well. Their date to the opera is cut short after Cherry argues with another patron for no reason and then injures his hand after punching the bathroom mirror. His doctor later prescribes him OxyContin, but Cherry abuses it and only feels right when he takes a lot of it. Cherry stays completely wasted all time. He couldn't work. He was always dizzy. The stress from it all causes Emily to be worried, to deal with her own frustration of not knowing how to support him without drugs. Emily starts taking Cherry's medicine as well, and they eventually turn into a drug-inducing couple. But their addiction wasn't limited to pills. They started doing full-blown heroin and cocaine too. Sometime later, Cherry and Emily become junkies and start to abuse heroin and oxy. They get hooked up with a local drug dealer named Pills and Coke. When Cherry asks Pills to front him some drugs until he is good for the money, Pills tells him to look after a safe belonging to his boss, a criminal called Black, who is also the man in the car that Cherry was talking to at the beginning of the movie. Cherry and Emily not high enough with what they had smoked, they decide to break the safe open with James's help, and they go on a drug binge. Cherry, Emily and James use most of the drugs that was secured inside for themselves. Sometime later, they hear a loud pounding on the door, with someone claiming to be the police. Cherry and Emily dump all the drugs down the sink and toilet, but only to find out it was just pills and coke. When he sees the empty safe, he's also informed that the drugs are gone. He orders Cherry to come up with a plan to get money to pay for all the drugs that he was supposed to sell for his drug dealer, Black, or he will kill them all. Cherry is entitled to huge debt to get the money for the drugs they used. Cherry says he is going to rob a bank to pay back the money. Cherry stages a quiet bank robbery by writing a threatening note on a dollar bill to the teller. He makes up the money to pay pills back, and while things look fine for him and Emily, they suffer withdrawals when their drugs run out, and they eventually run out of money, so to support his addiction and Emily's. Cherry continues to rob banks and most of the time with no mask to cover his face. Time goes by and the two continue to live this life until one day when Emily overdoses and almost dies in a hospital. After another bender, Cherry woke up and saw that Emily looked pale and unconscious. He rushed her to the hospital and admitted to the nurse and officer that she took heroin. Cherry is blamed for all of this when Emily's mother and stepfather arrive, and Emily's mother threatens Cherry to leave Emily alone or she will deal with him. Cherry blames himself too. He goes back to his truck and stabs himself in the leg with a needle repeatedly. Time goes by, Emily is checked into rehab, but she escapes her drug rehabilitation facility and tries to reunite with Cherry. He tries to put her on a bus to send her back and persuade her that he is no good for her, but Emily refuses and says she does not care and tells Cherry she wants to be with him. Cherry tells her that he will leave her if she doesn't get clean, but she just says she will get high with or without him. Cherry gives up and goes back home with her, and he resorts to going back to robbing banks to maintain his and Emily's addiction. They get a dog, hoping it will help them with their drug addiction and maybe change, but it doesn't work. Needing more money to support their addiction and to pay off his remaining debt, Cherry brings James and Pills in on it as accomplices to help him rob multiple tellers at once and get more money. During a robbery, James becomes too scared to go through with it and runs away behind Cherry's back. Cherry abandons the bank robbery and goes back in the car. He is infuriated with James, but James just says sorry and asks to be the getaway driver instead, and Pills can help Cherry to rob the bank. They all agree. However, when Cherry tries to get Pills to help him, Pills bails on him midway through the bank robbery as well, forcing Cherry to rob the bank alone and runs back to the car. As he drives away with James in a getaway car, Cherry stresses that Pills and Coke will likely rat him out if he gets caught by the police and convinces James to turn the car around and search for him. They find Pills on the street after getting high, and after putting him inside the car, Cherry becomes aware that Pills has been shot and is severely bleeding. Cherry and James debate on whether they should take him to the hospital or not, 
but they both eventually decide that it's too risky for them to take him to the hospital, and Pills dies inside the car from his gunshot wound. They dump the body on the side of the road and part ways. Later, Cherry is visited by Black outside his home, who demands the payment that he is owed, or he will kill Emily, and then kill him as well. Cherry sees Emily looking terribly high and worn out, and he sees all the horror that he has done to her. To end the threads of conflict, Cherry kisses and says goodbye to Emily before performing one last robbery that brings us to the start of the film in 2007. He goes off to the same bank from earlier, but after taking the money, he tells Vanessa to set off the alarm, promising not to hurt her. He manages to pull off the robbery, but the retrospection of the past pains his heart. He decides to end the struggle for once and for all. He dumps the money in Black's car and then walks out to the open road, firing a gun to draw police attention. In a beautiful shot scene, Cherry surrenders himself, then sits down to get high one last time before passing out just as the cops arrive. Cherry is sentenced to several years in prison. He also goes through rehab and manages to kick his habit for good. When he's released on parole, he is happy to see Emily there to pick him up. Emily looks healthy, happy, and smiling as she has now gotten clean as well. They are still wearing their wedding rings and look completely detoxed. Cherry smiles back at her knowing that they are both free from their addiction and can finally live a happy, peaceful life together. The music and the visuals suggest the arrival of their happy ending. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.